You know, it blows my mind how many investors fail at these three things. You no, know, it's not driving while vlogging and being in a Tesla that's not currently on autopilot like it usually is. It's something more meaningful to you and I see it happen every day to people I work with because, well, that's what I do investments. Instead, if people just implemented these three simple things, they would make so much more money. They would win at investing, whether it's real estate, stocks, bonds, I don't care, they would win. And it just seems so basic. It surprises me that more people don't actually do that. Oh my gosh, Christmas decorations are out already. What world are we in? Well, golly, that breakfast was yummy. So I think the number one problem we usually have as investors is we actually truly believe in the efficient market hypothesis that says that the market and stock market pricing and real estate pricing is actually efficient. But of course, even if you've only ever watched this channel for, well, the next 10 seconds, when I say that real estate is definitely not efficient, especially when you can buy wedge properties, then we know that stocks probably aren't as efficient as we think either. In fact, if stocks were really truly efficient, why would they fluctuate so dramatically on a day-to-day -day basis without any real causal explanation? Sure, we can correlate, oh, well, this news thing happened or this came out, but does that really affect the underlying value of the businesses that we're valuing with stocks? No. And so much like this house right here, that in 2011 sold for $235,000 and is now probably worth almost $700,000 on a busy street? Mean to say that in 2011, real estate pricing was efficient? Is Tesla stock efficient when it swings so dramatically? Is it efficient that Amazon has a ridiculous price to earnings ratio compared to a company like Apple, which is cranking earnings? Yet their stock is falling and they have a low PE ratio relative to other, especially tech company stocks. So, but what's the point? What's the point of me saying this? What's the point of coming out and saying, you know what, maybe the market isn't efficient. The point of this is once we realize that a lot of whatever market is, we're trading in stocks, bonds, real estate, whatever, we have to understand that sometimes there really isn't an explanation other than human psychology has drawn values overly down or blown them up overly high. And it's really when we understand that flaw in human pricing and how markets are priced that we can really go shopping for opportunities. We start eliminating this thought that, oh, well, there's no way I can find a good deal. I'll just not invest. And that's probably the biggest flaw when it comes to people wanting to invest is they don't invest because, oh, it's not the right time to buy stock. Oh, it's not the right time to buy bonds. It's not the right time to buy real estate. We should wait because we actually believe that there are so many times in the market where it just doesn't make sense to buy. How many people didn't wanna buy in 2011 because they were fearful of a shadow inventory of real estate coming out, causing an additional wave of foreclosures that was gonna crush the economy all over again and stocks would plummet even further. Bank of America, when it was selling at $6, was gonna to go to zero. Then we realized really how irrational such low prices really were. Much like in 2006, we only realized in hindsight how irrationally high prices were. So when we eliminate this thought, which we could debate long about whether or not the market is sufficient, but when we eliminate the thought that everybody knows more than you know, and the market is efficient, so there's no way you can make money, then maybe once that thought is gone, you'll actually start diving in and start looking for deals. And then guess what? You'll find them. <laughs> The second flaw that I frequently see investors, short-sightedness. That is, if I don't start making passive income today so that I could start spending more money while working less, then I don't wanna invest. And that is probably the saddest flaw of real estate investors, of stock investors, or really of any investors that, well, it doesn't crank money for me today so I can go to the Bahamas and sit around and open up my email and go, oh, 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 I'm such a good investor, I'm making lots of money every single day, then I don't wanna invest. 
And those people that sit on the sidelines and don't invest ever are oftentimes the same people that argue, well, the market's efficient. There's no way I can, you know, make money in the market. And it just doesn't make sense to invest. And look, I don't want to come across as some lemon that's going to tell you, oh, you should always buy, buy, buy. Look, I, I say it so much on this channel. Don't buy units right now. Units are overpriced. Two units, three units, four units, 10 units, 30 units. I don't care what it is. So many of these units are overpriced. The only reason reason we're seeing syndication companies buy big deals right now is because a they have to because they've got a bunch of hungry investors willing to throw money at them this enables funds to overpay for the properties they're buying but they don't care because they're collecting their fee they close a deal they get one percent two percent right off the top that's great money for the fund and then it makes investors feel special but a big thing i'm talking about right now is finding those wedge deals buying real estate with disparity pricing because of the flaws in single family real estate, such as why does a house like this trade for $799,000? And then I flip over to a house that needed a little bit more work initially, and then all of a sudden it sells for $525,000. They're in the same neighborhood. There's, there's no difference. There's no difference in rental potential. There's no difference in, in the quality of build. It's the same neighborhood. It's the same tract. It's the same builder. It's the same materials. Yet much like Warren Buffett's cigar butt stocks, and he's still finding deals today, you can find deals in real estate too. This is what we talk about so much in my real estate investing course. We'll learn below. All right, let's go. <laughs> Love that that door closes by itself. <laughs> this car is ridiculous. And they keep sending me more updates. Actually been making the car a lot better. So in case you're one of those people that's been following me or sending me messages going, what stock are you buying every Friday, Kevin? Well, it used to be Tesla. But now that their value's gone up a little bit, I was buying them a lot at 250 to 270. Now I've been buying Apple lately, especially since Starbucks been jumping up. That was another sort of Americana stock that I was really into. Now I've been focusing a little bit on Apple because they're down. Now, what's interesting about that is it actually leads into my third point. Initially, when I saw that Starbucks was up like 10% and Apple was down like 10%, I started thinking to myself, oh, oh, I'm gonna buy more Starbucks because that makes me feel good. I'm a Starbucks investor and that stock's going up. This is great. How can I get any better? But then I realized, well, wait a minute. You should be a contrarian. You should buy when the price goes down. It's an opportunity to shop. This is what I've been talking about. So what then is point number three? Let's discuss. Oh my gosh, I'm at the beach and that's a trash can. Okay, here we go. So number three, we overvalue the news that we hear online. One of the latest examples of this has been the overvaluing of people suggesting, oh my gosh, there's so many price drops happening in real estate. Yeah, so all of a sudden, we have so much fear in real estate, yet what's really happening, and I've talked about this so much before, is that all the news about real estate lags two or three months. So all of a sudden, we see builder stocks in the toilet. And it's really just an over-exaggeration. It's that pull downward, that excessive pull downwards based on old news. This is why on this channel, I always try to bring you fresh data. This is why a big part of my real estate investing course isn't just telling you basic, boring junk like, oh, uh, this is what a ROI is, and this is what a cash on cost return is, and how to calculate it. I try to teach you the same investing fundamentals that have been what were instrumental to my success in real estate investing, knowing the market, seeing trends, and then after that, figuring out where disparity is. Look, I don't profess to be a stock expert. I do profess to be a relatively decent real estate expert, but I also know that I don't know everything. So by no means do I ever want to come across and say, oh, I know everything. I, God, I don't. And I always say that I don't know everything. But the principles, the fundamentals, they, they just make too much sense. That's always what I try to convey. And hopefully you can take some winning advice away from this. Don't kid yourself. The market is not computerized yet. It's still human. It's not fully efficient. It gets dragged to extreme lows and extreme highs, which create opportunities for you. Don't be short-sighted. Don't be that person that's like, I need my passive income tomorrow. Otherwise, I'ma just not do anything. And the way I want you. And the way I want you to think about the news is this. When you think of the news, when you think of people reporting updates about the market to you, are they trying to rationalize an explanation for what's happening in the market? Because usually we don't know why the market went up or down, but we try to suggest that we know. And I don't like that. I think prices go up and down because the market isn't efficient. After all, I always say the stock market is a graph of human emotion. 
Real estate isn't that different. You just have to figure out where the disparity lies. If you can figure that out without a short-term, short-focused mindset, think long-term, you'll win. Hey, can we turn on the autopilot? I wish you could autopilot from here to the highway for me. Oh, it got hot! Oh my gosh! Woo! It's getting hotter than it is in my office with all the studio lights blasting my face. Which, by the way, I did buy some LED lighting yesterday on Amazon. So we'll be getting rid of those hot heat lamps, tungsten and fluorescent glow in me face, driving me nutso. Now enjoy some more beach while you decide which video to watch next. Okay, if you haven't picked a video yet and you're still here, that means you need to send me a DM on Instagram at me, Kevin, and request a video topic or leave a comment below. Thanks.